Hey everyone, welcome back to QSR Nation, your weekly source of food service marketing and business strategies for success. Here are your hosts, Josh, Beth, Tony, and Grant from the PFS Brands National Headquarters in Holt Summit, Missouri. Hey everybody, welcome back to QSR Nation. As always, we have Josh, Beth, Tony, and Grant here from the PFS Brands National Headquarters in Holtzville, Missouri to talk about food service marketing and business strategies for success. Today, we're super excited to have Jack Rowland of C Deep Consulting here with us today in the studio. Woo! Welcome, Jack. Good afternoon. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Glad to have you. Um, now, Jack, can you tell us a little bit about your background and how you got to where you are? Absolutely. So, I come from a heavy telecommunications background uh, with over 18 years in the industry, primarily working with customer experience across uh, every one of my previous lives. And so CD Consulting was really conceived out of the lack of customer experience centric agencies. And while we do focus on marketing, sentiment analysis, social, and all things digital, really at the core of what we do is customer experience because that's what matters most. We're in the age of the customer, and so we felt that this was a really big opportunity for us to really help brands champion their message and just really showcase the amazing products and services that they sell. Well, I know that um, we've had a chance to look through some of um, the robust um, tools that you guys offer, and it's just amazing and eye-opening when you get into this space and then you look and be able to you know see how you can grow your business through some of these opportunities that exist. And a lot of folks don't even realize or possibly, you know, even available to them. Yeah, yeah technology is evolving so quick that there are so many different tools that are available. And I really believe that we're living in very exciting times because of all these emerging technologies, all these really transformative solutions that are helping businesses to focus on the most important thing, and that's the customer. Yeah, for sure. And we talked about it earlier today. You mentioned that, you know, even two or three years ago, we weren't really focused on these customer reviews on Google My Business or things right. like that. But now that that is like the main focus that everybody's going for in the local marketing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, reputation is extremely important, right? Whether it's your Aunt Susie or the person you've never met online, a recommendation goes a long way. And really what you're seeing today is everybody is a peer reviewer. Everybody has feedback and insights and so it's one of those channels that has just really emerged in recent years to become very critical for businesses to incorporate in in their models. It's 100% true because you know if you think about it for like Amazon if I ever buy anything yeah they might have a five-star review but I'm going to go in there and read almost every review for a while just to make sure that I'm getting the product that I've actually looked at and so when you think about it whenever it comes to your brand it's the exact same idea. It's trust. Right, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And making sure that, you know, everyone, you know, understands that as a, a retail, you know, establishment. I mean, you talk about, you know, the importance in the last two or three years. Well, the one thing that's really, you know, helped, I think, elevate that is the mobile phone in your hand at all times. You know, and, and so it's so quick and easy now to uh, state your opinion, your experience, to share your good experience, to communicate your poor experience. And... I don't know if maybe, you know, everyone's, we have people we speak to on a daily basis that say, I don't even want to have a Facebook page because it's just going to be full of negative reviews and negativity and not because we do anything bad, but just because people are just negative. I don't even want to be in that space. But to compete in today's world, you have to be in that space. And honestly, I mean, and we had this conversation, you know, off air before, but having a negative review isn't necessarily the end of all things, though, because you can respond to that and it helps turn that around. Right. Well, whether or not you have a Facebook page or not, people are still going to leave those reviews. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, people have to understand that it's a digital world out there. And whatever is said about your brand is also going to be online. And when it's online, you have to be able to either manage it or understand how you can turn that around so that way you can change that customer opinion. Right. And, you know, one of the things to just add on to what Beth was saying, 81% of the planet, okay, 81% of the planet today has a social profile and is using social media. So just let that sink in for a minute. You know, there there are certain organizations and people with a philosophy that they want to avert engaging with social. That is probably one of the biggest detractors that a business can really have simply because there's so much of the world residing online. And to your point, Anthony, 
The device is a part of our daily life. It's a necessitation, whether we agree, disagree, annoyed with people on their phones in restaurants, you know, throughout the whole meal, it is a part of where we're at. And it's the digital world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And there's also so many channels that, um, you know, you can look at like Facebook, Google and stuff like that. Um, what do you, what, what would you, I don't know, you have, you have to rank all of them, but what would you say is the most important channels to have a good presence on? And then, um, I don't know, what's your top three, I guess, is what I'm saying. Okay. Well, I think it's going to really depend um, by category of business, but I would really caution against saying that there are any actors or any platforms that you should really focus on solely. Although Google, Facebook, and Yelp are some of the three biggest, a lot of other consumers choose to gain their information from other sources. And so our recommendation is to cast a wide net, to make sure that you're not just on the majors, but that you're also on the minors. So City Search is, uh, is a platform that I think uh, came to life 2005. Okay. I don't know very many people that are using City Search today to find reputation or to discover a new brand. However, because City Search has been around for such an extended period of time, it has what's known as web authority. So it's kind of like your great grandfather. You're not going to discount his advice. You're going to go to him because he might have the most relevant information. So the same thing, even though this entity isn't one of the most popular today, it has a lot of authority, so you don't want to discount those platforms. That's why when people ask, hey, what are the three or what are the top channels that I should focus my business on? We always say to be holistic about your approach and really look about spreading your content and information across as many <coughs> channels as possible. Well, I know it's one of those things that, you know, as a business owner would jump out of my mind is, okay, great. Now that I've got to spend a whole extra eighth day of the week somehow to to manage this because mm -hmm. it can be daunting and overwhelming. Sure. You know, just to have to think, I've got to go do all this now. And, you know, and that's one thing where, like, you know, your company and, and other competitors out in the field, you know, they help provide those services to mm -hmm. help you achieve those things. But how, how do you, as a small business owner, how do you manage that and feel confident that you're actually, you know, being represented if you do hire someone to kind of manage that for you? Well, it's a great question, and I think that you know there's a lot of concern out there with is what I need for my business being delivered? Is it being realized? And so I think that the simple answer for that is just really investigating, number one, who you're doing business with before you know commencing that relationship, and number two, asking for input, asking for reporting, asking for metrics that tie back to the work that's being done for your business. There's you know, a number of, of different ways that you can quantify that, but ultimately it's showing the work. Well, I think that's a great point because that way at least you can see physically that you're getting what you're paying for. Mm -hmm. And then of course there's the whole reputation management side as far as you know, there's, there's so many different things like with Facebook, you know, with the different bosses set up to help those reviews be, you know, or not reviews, but the responses. You know, that's another aspect that you know, a lot of businesses say, oh wow, you know, Joey loves his experience, that's awesome, but they actually don't say anything to Joey online. Right. I mean, is, is that okay practice, or, or I mean, every comment, does everyone have to have a, a response, or I mean, what, what's your take on engagement there? So engagement is at um, a very interesting point right now, and engagement drives the web. Our biggest recommendation is for brands to always uh, interact with somebody who is engaging with their brand. And so if somebody leaves a comment, leave a comment back, even if it's very basic. Hey, had a great visit. Thanks for stopping by. It's a simple way of letting people know that you appreciate them, but it's really twofold. You've not only engaged with that individual to make them feel special and to show that your business does appreciate them, but others who come afterwards to evaluate, to learn about your organization will see that review, see that engagement, and be able to ascertain that you are vested in your customers. So bottom line, engagement is critical. Uh, you're not only rewarded by the web giants for that online engagement, but it's the right thing to do. You want to let people know that their opinion matters, even if it's just a, a very basic comment. Now, if you have a negative review and somebody's coming to you with an issue, I think that that's also a great opportunity because that gives you 
the business owner a chance to really show what you're doing to fix a problem. Yeah. Everything's not perfect. We don't live in a perfect world, and I don't think anybody's expectation is for every business to operate 100% all the time. There's going to be opportunities that come Absolutely. Up. And I think, you know, letting people know that, you know, you're actually there, you're listening, you're responding, even if they didn't have that perfect experience, or at least that you appreciate the, the good experience in common. Because uh, we've talked about this before about, you know, the relational aspects, you know, emotional branding and those types of things, you know, and, and people feeling a part of your brand and mm-hmm. through engagement, you know, they can actually, you know, achieve that and feel, hey, you know, my voice was heard. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, that's all definitely great information. But to kind of switch up gears, Jack, I know you do a lot with social media as well. Can you just give us a few social media tips? Let's start with um, how often should you be posting, say, on Facebook if, for your brand and your company? So it's going to really depend on you know what you're looking to get out of um, what you're looking to get out of that type of engagement, right? Ultimately, you probably want to post at least once a day. Okay, posting multiple times a day is something that you see common for some of the larger organizations that have a wider audience. But when you, when you do multiple posts, let's say we posted right now and we decide to make another post an hour later, the algorithm is going to automatically cannibalize one right. of those posts. So your reach has now been scaled back some. And for those people who are following you who like your brand, is it necessary to flood their feed with so mm-hmm. many different posts, right? Uh, but again, some of the larger organizations, uh, it's necessary because they are offering so many different types of services. A lot of times those, um, those posts are segmented, so they're highly targeted to a specific audience. So really, I would say at least once a day, um, or at least once every other day, if you don't have the bandwidth, the type of staff to um, support that type of um, engagement. But you do want some presence, and you do want to keep some regular presence uh, because it's twofold. Number one, you're keeping your audience informed. And number two, you're helping to show the platform that you're vested in engaging with that service, and that therefore rewards the business by added exposure, et cetera. And you're saying just a regular post, not like a boosted post, right? So boosted posts are a little bit different. So that's in your kind of pay-to-play space, which is also important, right? With that, um, you're able to reach a much more specified demographic, right? So you're able to segment and target people within a certain age, within a certain range of interests, etc. Where a regular post, you're not able to do that. You know, of course, you're paying an extra fee for that exposure. But, you know, boosting a post versus running an ad, two different things depending on what are you trying to accomplish. Do you want to bring a larger audience to your page? Are you trying to bring more awareness to a specific product or a service? It just really is dependent um, on what the ultimate goal is for, for the organization. Right. Well, I think, you know, overall, you know, if, if you haven't invested time and getting up to speed in, you know, the digital and social age, you know, over the next few weeks, you know, it is probably not going to be, you know, advantageous, you know, with the busy change, you know, end of the holiday season and flipping into the new year. Maybe you're not going to have the time to set aside, but I would highly recommend that folks schedule some time, set aside, get familiar, get comfortable, or begin the vetting process to get someone who is in this space because, you know, we've talked about, you know, trends in 2019. We've had several of our guests. We've asked what they all thought. You know, at the end of the day, I mean, touching um, the consumer space in, in a digital way, you know, reaching through that phone is going to be key no matter what channel you're using. But, you know, I, I think we've got to make sure that as business owners and as managers and even as, as team members, um, we've got to be conscious of what we put out there and we need to make sure that we have some genuine appreciation and, right. and have some fun. You know, that's oh, the thing, too. I mean, pe- people don't just want rigid stuff. You know, that's why we leave all Beth's mess-ups in the right. uh, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Cut you. Cut all mine Thank out. You. And, uh, you know, but, I mean, I, I think, you know, having, you know, that uh, that personality within uh, your post, I think, is going to be critical as well because people want just to feel good about things and, and feel listened to, and, and they want to know that, hey, I, I'm a part of this. And those people can become huge proponents of your business. You know, and so with all that being said, I mean, where do you think are going to be some of the these, you know, critical pieces for 2019 in the social space? So in social space, and I'd really say digital as a whole instead of social, because social is a component of digital, right? Uh, but I think we're going to see a, a number of things. So number one, 
AOC is going to continue to dominate. Age of the customer is critical. Regardless if you're enterprise, a small medium sized business, a single location or multi location, there is nothing that could be more important than the customer experience. And that includes the digital engagement and experience, that includes the live and on site engagement, every touch point. And so, with that being critical, I do believe that a lot of small, medium-sized businesses will start to adopt uh, full-stack solutions. Um, you're going to see a larger adaptation of technology. There are so many emerging technologies that people need to really set aside their fears, you know, the fear of the unknown, because we don't know how these things will function. A lot of these tools are new. But it's really critical for businesses to understand that technology is there to assist. There are automated solutions. There are solutions to provide insights. And people need to be open to incorporating these types of platforms into their daily operations. And again, it doesn't matter the size of the business. Um, but really, at the end of the day, reputation will continue to dominate because of that AOC factor and that ultimately means that people will have to get become more vested online in order to really demonstrate um, a differentiator from their competition. Well and you know Beth and I gave a presentation earlier and we talked about um, the digital age and, and the change trying the changing of guard in the world population um, in there's, you know, there is you know, there's that mindset that, well, the millennials, you know, rule the day now, and so you've got to make sure you speak to them, and you do. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the I think the, the presentation, and Beth can correct me if I'm wrong. She she'll will. enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> I but, always enjoy that. <laughs> but um, I believe there's, like, the fastest growing segment in on Twitter is grandparents. It's seniors, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and it is that 55-plus category. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the millennial you know, age that is saying, hey, you know, our, our you know, group only wants digital stuff, whatever. I mean, the entire world is moving in that, like you said, it was 81% of the population has some social channel. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if if someone is kind of thinking, well, like you said, you know, maybe this isn't for me that, you know, this, this is the time now to make the decision to get educated, you know, don't be afraid. Uh, a lot of this stuff is actually so intuitive now it's not like it was five years ago. I mean, it's super simple, and that's why you're seeing a lot of different you know segments of folks who maybe don't feel that they have the technological um, prowess to maneuver through things. I mean, it's it's so intuitive on the back end to set these things up now. So it's it's so important that as you you know are making these plans, making that change over, you're going to reach these people one way or another. But right now, I think digital is the monster in the room. It really is, and if you think about it by the year 2020. 1.7 megabytes of new information will be created every second for every human on the planet. That's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Incredible. Especially with video so, being rolling the roost mm -hmm. too. Video will be dominant, um, but you know, one thing that I really encourage uh, businesses to think about, it's really, you know, as we move into an automated era and as digital grows, a lot of people have concern about, well, is it going to be man? Or is it going to be machine? Mm -hmm. But really, the answer in, in my philosophy is it has to be both man and machine. We are in that era where some of your processes do need to be automated. A person should not be focusing on them. It can be done far more efficiently. That gives you the bandwidth and resources to pivot those elements to your customer. So there, there's a lot that can be said, and I know a lot of people have reservations about adopting these emerging technologies, but really get rid of that fear because it's only something that will help and really benefit the business overall. Technology is your friend. For oh, sure. Really. Yeah. Um, and Jack, and as we kind of wrap this up, we, we'll have a few more questions here, but can you, we always like to ask our guests one question. Um, what is a book you would like to recommend or that you've read lately that you'd like to tell everybody about? The, the Art of Branding um, is a big one by Guy uh, Kawasaki, and it really helps organizations to understand from the colors that they're choosing to the font to really just that overall brand message communicated from, from a simple logo what is important? What is the psychology behind what creates a powerful brand 
and what creates a weak brand. And so I think that this is probably a great resource, especially for a lot of small business owners, to look at because there's insights that some of the largest organizations in the world have really adopted for success. Cool. That's awesome. Well, go ahead. No, no, no. All you, sir. I've uh, talked a lot. No way. <laughs> <laughs> you guys exchange pleasantries. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jack's been, uh, this has been a great conversation. If people want to reach out and learn more about CD, where can they find you at? Uh, they can reach us at uh, sonar2020.com. Awesomeness. And you guys got anything else? No, I've talked a lot. Really? <laughs> no, that never happened. <laughs> well, Jack, thanks very much for stopping in today and being in the studio with us. It's been a great time. Yeah, yeah thank absolutely. you all. Really appreciate, uh, appreciate being here with the uh, Pro Food Services team and uh, hope to be back soon. Awesome. Right, for, thank you. you. Thank you. Right, thank you. And um, for all of our listeners out there, please reach out to us at uh, qsrnation at pfsbrands.com. I always forget that. <laughs> and um, you subscribe to the podcast at pfsbrands.com slash podcast. And for everybody, Josh, Beth, Tony, and Grant, we'll talk to you next week. See ya. Today's episode is brought to you by Champs Chicken. For deals, discounts, and updates, check out champschicken.com slash connect. Be sure to stop by next week for another episode of QSR Nation. And be sure to check us out online at pfsbrands.com forward slash podcast. Podcast.